have talked about how we broke Iraq. And Iraq was actually functioning quite well. I remember when I was there that one of the, one of, somebody said, you know, Iraq was like, or Saddam Hussein was like a hornet's nest, you know. It's like if you just leave it alone, if you leave the government alone, you'll be fine. And many governments are like that. But, you know, what you've always said is that we broke the system and now we really need to fix it because we broke it out of our own greed, power, and desire for what you have. And so could you talk a little bit about that, like help people understand the history of something that, you know, they were, these, most people in this room were just young children when the war started. Yeah, I, I said this before, and I, I talked to some American officials when I was in Jordan. I said, you broke it, you fixed it. What happened was in 2003, when the United States invaded Iraq, they dismantled the, the complete system. They dismantled the government. They sent the army home. They sent the police force home. So we, for three months, we had total lawlessness. We, I did not see a police officer or an army in the street. So, and then the whole, the, we, we've been used to a governing of, of dictatorship for, for 30, 40 years. One person ruled Iraq. We were not used to democracy. And I've always talked to young generation. I said, democracy is something you are born, you should be born into, you should practice, you should not be just dumped upon you. Most people here, when they, after 2003, when America brought democracy, they did not understand what democracy was. They thought that democracy is doing anything you want, anywhere, anytime, which is wrong. So the complete political system of Iraq was changed. Now we have, we've, we have uh, election. We've never had election. We had election when Saddam was in power. It was... Uh, show. I mean, Saddam will win by 99.9%. Now we have elections. People started going to referendum, to elections, and they start moving into it. But it will take, in my opinion, years and years for us to realize what democracy is. Now it's it's a little bit better. I mean, we've had like, this is the fourth government after 2003. What's hurting us is corruption. Corruption is killing Iraq. And we just are in a cycle of corruption and we cannot get out of it. I don't know what to do about it. So listen, one of the things, Bassem, I'm going to show them some couple of photos here, right? One of the things that you have to understand about Iraq, about countries, I hear people talk about the Middle East and the, you know, Middle East this, Middle East that. Of course, they've never ever thought about Qatar and Saudi Arabia and the Emirates and so on, but how just broken down everything is. But, but what I see and what I often like to show are all the ways in which countries in the world are just like us. And so one of the places where we went when we were there a couple times actually is a shopping mall. And I know I filmed this in the wrong way, but just look at this footage that I filmed. It's not a foreign place. Most of you could be very home here. There's a Santa Claus in the middle of this Muslim country. And play it one more time, bro. Just re redo it. Bassem doesn't need to see this because, oh, well, he can see it. Look, do you see that? Can you just imagine yourself there? It's not so foreign. Stores from all over the world, different places. But we don't see this in the U.S. This isn't the kind of stuff that really comes home. And so it allows us to maintain this distance between us and, let's say, Iraqis. I want to talk about, you and I were talking about Notre Dame and the destruction and this is the mosque in El Nuri, the El Nuri Mosque. So this is one of the most famous mosques in the world, and it's famous. They call it the Hunchback. This is in Mosul. And they call it the Hunchback. Obviously, it's very old, but it has this minaret that's kind of leaning, and that's where it gets the name, the Hunchback. But it's a beautiful old mosque. 
And ISIS destroyed it. And ISIS, meaning the radical fringe of Muslims, the tiny, 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 tiny percentage of a percent of Muslims, destroyed it. Which is about the same size as the tiny, tiny, tiny percent of Christians who do the same kind of damage to the world. And so this is the mosque here. And so, Basim, can you say a couple things about that when you were watching the destruction of Notre Dame yesterday? Because I was thinking about all of the religious buildings and the holy sites that all around the Islamic world that have been destroyed as a result of this war that we have started, that we put in place. The armies that we have funded and given weapons to and all of this stuff that emerges out of the United States. And I think about destruction like that and I think about how easy it is for Americans to think that that's happening over there and that we're not connected with it. And I think of all the passion right now that is going out toward Notre Dame and an equal amount of passion in the Muslim world that is exhibited toward all of these beautiful old Islamic sites that have been destroyed in the past 20 years. And so, any, any, would you like to say anything on that? When they mentioned the, the date it was, it was built, it was exactly of the same century that Anuri Mosque was, it was on the 12th century, I think. And this Anuri Mosque was the, it has the bent Manara, and it was the best representation of the city of Mosul. Well, Mosul, we call it the city of two springs and Al-Hadba. Al-Hadba means the bent. So this mosque was when Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, when he first entered Mosul, he gave the first, his first Friday sermon was at that mosque. And uh, it was bombed by them, ISIS, in like a year and a half later. Uh, they bombed so many mosques. Their idea of bombing the mosques is uh, many mosques in Mosul, they have people buried in them. So according to their version of Islam, you cannot have a mosque with a two minutes. So they demolished every mosque. and. Almost every old mosque in Mosul, ancient mosque, had a two in it. Mm -hmm. So just came into my mind how people of Mosul, I, my, when, I, when I watched it being bombed, I cried. Because I, I was born in Mosul in 1960 and it was there. And when I returned to Mosul, it was gone. And I was looking at people in France weeping and crying and sending prayers for that cathedral. It just crossed crossed points at me. I mean, every religion has something sacred to it. We have the mosque, you have the cathedrals and the churches. We are the same. We are the same. Yeah, the same. There's no difference at all, really. And worship the same God. And this is the profound peace that I experience in my work and travel and friendship with Muslims and Christians and Jews and everybody else. Ooh, ooh.